Well, my friends, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a fresh episode of our Planet Zoo series, Jammy Conservation Park. This is, of course, our community builder series and this is our Sunday roundup. Um, yes, it's called that now. I'm going to explain all as today's episode does a roll on. But uh, obviously with the live streaming, I feel like this is more of a roundup and this is more of the episode where you kind of get given your chance to unlock new zones and uh, send your ideas in that are all important to the series my friends but uh, yeah we've got lots to get through again today but if you've missed last episode it is linked above my friends do feel free to go and click on that and watch it first there's no need to vote on zones or anything on that episode because of course we're going to round those up today and go through them in today's episode and if you've been watching the live streams uh this week just gone you will know which vote which uh, zone we ended up going with anyway so uh yeah no need to do that but if you've not seen last episode i implore you to go and watch it we built a very very beautiful restaurant for the uh for the facility my friends but uh, first piece of business is i know you're all waiting and you know in anticipation for what zone is going to be unlocked in today's episode and uh, you're going to see it on your screen right now my friends uh zone a got nine votes zone b got one vote zone c got 11 votes and zone d got a measly zero votes but yeah as you can see zone c is the one that we're going to be going with in today's episode it's the one that we obviously went with in the live streams as well um i did set you a like target of 60 likes as well you managed 45 so we're not going to be unlocking another square on top of that but that is going to be something that we're going to continue to roll on each and every week as well to see if you can hit those like targets because the likes are really important at the end of the day to not only the series but the channel and pushing my videos out there it further into the uh, YouTube universe basically so um, yeah it's uh it's just it's just it's all these little ideas that you guys bring to the table add something else to the series but uh yeah as we as i've just said we are going to be unlocking zone c it is all of uh, this ladies and gents the big thing and i think the big reason why a lot of people wanted this uh zone unlocked was because of the fact that we have uh, big big plans for uh gemsbok to go in this uh in this space and uh so that's what we are going to be trying to do in today's episode, basically, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, there is that to look forward to. Um, we now need to just get rid of uh, this square. It takes a little while to get rid of these squares now. But yeah, I hope you're still enjoying the series. I hope you're still enjoying it, even with all the changes that we've been making as we go along. The series was always going to evolve in this way. And uh, I really, really hope that you uh, are enjoying the changes as much as I am. I actually think it's really added uh, a different dynamic to the series now. And it gives us a chance to open up even bigger spaces uh, uh, so we can forward think and plan, plan our zoo out a bit more. So there we go. So that's the that's the area that we've got we do of course still have this uh, small piece of uh, land here when we have this piece of land here as well I've been asking you to get all your ideas in obviously for these and we're going to go through some of them in uh, you know some of the best comments uh, in today's episode but uh, we're actually going to hit that play button and go through the comments right now ladies and gents so uh, that is going to be the next piece of a business so um, I am going to press play I am going to press G so it can go into full screen um we are going to be going forward five years ladies and gentlemen so we're going to be going to may 80 and then we will be back uh and we will start that build um so yeah i'll basically go for all the comments and then i'll tell you what i plan to do in today's episode so yep yeah, uh, once again we had loads of comments so uh, i'm just going to pick some of them that i liked the most uh, or stuff i felt like needed explaining uh, and we're gonna we're basically gonna be doing it like that from from this point on. Uh, so the first comment this week comes in from Sander Nealon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, he has said, "Love this episode. You got a lot done. The restaurant's amazing. Uh, view must be stunning." To break up the zoo, I would add uh, a heavily planted garden walk through park next to the restaurant. I would uh, still suggest to combine the Gemsbok and ostriches. Lots of zoos combine animals to boost natural behaviour, and it saves space. Solar panels are well made. Keep adding them uh, on new buildings. That's uh, all for today. It really looks great. So, yeah, I kind of took that on board, especially the ostrich idea. Um, we did talk about this in the live stream when we get into the sort of uh, when we get into the build part uh, and the live section. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, next comment comes in from Chewy Gaming. And uh, they've said, first of all, I'm blown away by how the restaurant and guest facilities look. Uh, you're getting much better when it comes to the to interior. Also love the view that the guests have uh, of the Lima Island while eating. Uh, I would really love to see you um, unlocking zone A and start building the tropical house. But I 
think you should finish what you have started first, uh, like the Gemsbok enclosure. So zone C would be the zone I choose to unlock, uh, so you can finish the checkpoint area. Uh, and if you are going to build something for the Reptarium, you can use part of zone C as well. Uh, I choose, so I choose zone C. Uh, I don't see um, a kind of bridge in the zoo. So I've got an idea that you could build a bridge that went over the uh, Gemsbok enclosure so you can have part of the Gemsbok enclosure uh, on zone E uh, from last episode. It's just an idea. It would give you the chance to make the game closure a little bigger and add some height to the zoo. It was a good. It was a good idea. But obviously, we did discuss this in the live streams. Uh, it's not something we went with. But I do like that idea of animal bridges and stuff. It's something that's getting really popular in zoos. I think it's something that we might have to think about later on down the line. Um, another idea I got was from my local zoo. A few years ago, you could ride a, uh, a funicle railway uh, that was um, located near the zoo entrance and it went over almost the whole zoo so you could see the animals from above while walking on the ground level. I think the station to it would fit behind the guest services. Uh, it's near the entrance and you can pretend that guests leave their backpacks in the locker and then um, ride the rail and, the, and then ride the railway. Uh, almost forgot, don't feel pressured to finish the conservation wall. Uh, I know you have a lot more to take care of. Um, hope the family's doing well and uh, see you for tomorrow's stream. Obviously, she, uh, he or, is Chewie a he or a she? I'm not entirely sure but they left their comment and they left um uh, just before we did the streams last week but yeah i actually love the idea of the of the railway chewy is actually uh referring to i've, I've just clicked on something i shouldn't have yeah uh, that's the trouble when you go into this mode uh chewy is referring to potentially putting the railway uh station back here somewhere um i'm not sure how well it fits back there um but if we could make it work, it could be interesting. Um, it could be really... My only my only concern is I don't see an entry point. I don't see how they get there. You don't really want them walking through this section or this section. Uh, but if we could make a pathway there, then that would be a good use of potentially this space. The railway could then go past the... Uh, Facilities we're going to have up here. I think that would be quite a, or quite a cool little thing to have the railway chugging past, uh, you know, th those facilities and things. Um, but yeah, that's definitely that's definitely food for thought, and it's definitely something that's going to go on the list of things that we are uh, potentially going to look at, and we're potentially going to do, uh, you know, with. Um, with the series, basically. Uh, so next comment comes in from a primal gamer this week. Uh, love the look of love the look the zoo is taking overall. I vote for section uh, C for the uh, Gemsbok habitat. And uh, law wise, I think that these Gemsbok were a private zoo where they where they were mistreated, being in a tiny pen, barely being fed. So the family took it upon themselves to take them in uh, to the zoo. Uh, and let them have another chance. Uh, you don't have to do that. It's just the thought that it would be a cool uh, addition to the story. I also think a cool idea for a little space next to the restaurant is maybe a photo booth area for a bit more realism. Since you do not... Uh so since you do see them everywhere in zoos in real life, that's all I have to say. Keep up the good work. That's going to be another idea that I add to the list. I really like the idea of a photo booth. I'm pretty sure that was something I planned to do. Basically, you're going to see when we get to the build section, I really ran out of time this week. And there's reasons why bits weren't finished as well. Uh, for those that attended the live streams, you will understand completely because um, I was asking lots and lots of questions, wasn't I, this week. But yeah, really like that. I'm going to add that to the list as well. Uh, Alexis Doris is next up beautiful work as always i'm forever jealous of your interiors even though you say they still need work in my opinion they do uh they're better than mine and that is subjective as well um i vote for zone c this week to open up your beloved gims box but be, uh, because they do deserve more space uh, than they currently are slated to have uh, as for the empty space next to the restaurant um I feel like there should be some kind of educational plaza there instead of a habitat. You could use it to introduce Africa to the west, tropical house in the north. Maybe both since the uh, it's no small area um, and a corner of theming goes a long way in a zoo. Also, uh, the zookeeper work zones is a good idea. Uh, Mum and dad to the reptarium, the kids to the new zoo. I also think uh, a fun bit of realism since you mentioned guest limit. I'd like to count my, I like to count my parking spaces multiplied by four and a half for the average group size to get the number of how many guests 
guests uh, fit in the zoo. I actually did that. It was as small as 300, but what I have done then is I've times that by a number and I've come to 1,500. Um, the reason I've done that is because obviously some guests would take you know public transport and all that sort of stuff, but um, it's there, the guest limit is going to be 1,500. And I did sort of use your your way of working it out as well, uh, Lexi. So um, so yeah, um, some good stuff in there. I do quite like the whole educational plaza type thing. Um, we sort of know what route we're going down, but if I could add maybe something there that it, that gets that involved as well, I think it would really help that space. Uh, next comment comes in from uh, Cam. And uh, they've said, hey, Dan, great episode. I love the cafe. Uh, I vote section C. Uh, just think it would fill the zoo nicely and make my OCD a little better. Um, an idea for the large area behind the ca uh, behind the lookout cafe is to leave it as a large open space for children to run around and play. Also, give somewhere for people to sit and eat that don't use the cafes and restaurants. Uh, could use another ice cream stand or something as well. Uh, I'm not sure about the playground, but it might be a good space filler. Uh, I only suggest this as when I was younger, due to the large size of my family, Family, we would uh, we would like to uh, add for this. So uh, I've, I've completely uh, lost track where I, where I was there. So let me start again. I, I only suggest this as when I was younger, due to the large size of my family, we would never use the zoo's restaurants and just bring our own packed lunches. Uh, another little idea would be to add uh, for this area, maybe a little sports pitch, children's football pitch maybe, nicely, uh, trying to tie the two channels together. Just something I've uh, seen at some more rural zoos around the UK. Uh, on a little critique, please correct me if I am wrong, but it seems the latest builds of the zoo are missing essential CCTV and security measures. Uh, that would be essential in the UK. I wouldn't take much to add this in. Uh, can't wait for the next live stream. I should be around to watch. Um, yeah, I actually started adding stuff like the CCTV. It's a, it's a critique that I needed because I need to be reminded of some stuff. Uh, so I, I really don't mind when you throw stuff like that in there, Cam, and I appreciate you doing so. And I actually really discussed that the idea of this being a bit more of an open area in the streams this week because it is a really, really good point that Cam brings to our attention that not everybody can afford the restaurants at the zoos. Some families are too large. Some families... Families just like to take their own food and their own packed lunches and stuff like that. So we probably do need a bit more of a larger sort of open space where people could sit and chill. And, you know, I think a big grassed area might help because this zoo is getting very sort of, uh, it's getting very kind of concrete obviously, with the large plaza, uh, you know, up to this point. So it's a really good point that Cam makes. Um, Joachim is next up. Uh, I would vote for A um, and make an animal on the road there beside the Lookout Cafe, like mandrels or a smaller animal, but have a wall of stone and plants that make it feel like you are going uh, in to the unknown. For example, have a down plane or an old car when a mandrel could clamber on. So the Tropical House Adventure starts on the road before you come to it. Uh, if I was to choose anything else, it would be C because uh, we could finish it all together. Um, yeah, that's a great that's a great comment. There's some heavy theming there with a down plane uh, or, or, a, or a car or whatnot. And there's not many zoos in the UK I've seen that theme that heavy, but um, it's something I would be happy to try if enough of you would like to see it uh, and the whole downed plane thing kind of could fit in with the whole uh, idea of the h airport hangars that, that night clive left a long time ago there could have been a plane in there that we used and you know we, we decided to use it for diff something different instead it is it is uh, for law purposes it actually works so you know if enough people wanted to see it it's something that we could potentially try um, next up is uh, sonia horn and uh, she has said hey dan i would love to see the park uh, near the park parking lots done but if i had to pick a zone it would be zone c uh, i basically picked this comment because i wanted to get to the bottom of uh, this just so you know what's happening with it um this is what sonia is talking about um obviously we did say this was going to be a nice sort of like park area that you know would be at the front of the zoo uh, and it hasn't been done it's not been touched um we did make we did get a tree put in and we got a swing put on the tree but that's as far as we got and i say we because my wife is going to be doing this um, she's never played the game and we decided that we would sit down together and she was going to do this. This was going to be her little thing that she did for the project. Lots of people, when we unlocked this, were saying that maybe your wife should help you do something. And uh, yeah, so obviously with a newborn baby, it's quite hard to find the time to get st stuff like this done. But, um, you know, maybe as and when sort of Emily's having a bit of a snooze, we can do a little bit each time and we'll get this put together uh but yeah the last the last thing i knew um my wife was planning what she wanted to do with this so uh it is it is in the works i can promise you that everybody 
it is going uh, to get done. Uh, next comment comes in from uh, Hayley McKinnon, and uh, she has said, really love the changes you've made. Uh, the streams were great to watch. Uh, the cafe looks fantastic. Really like the concept. The only thing I feel uh, it's missing is something, um, is some things on the walls on the inside. Maybe try uh, adding some advertising of the food available or animal decals uh, to add some character to the interior of the walls. I do agree with that. I did um, mention in last episode, I, I ran out of time, unfortunately, and I didn't get that done, but... Um, yeah, I, I agree. I do think though, there's there's two walls in particular that I really feel need something. So uh, that will be something I concentrate on. Uh, two, I vote for Zone A as I've been super excited for the, this part of the zoo since the start. And now that we uh, have a clear pathway to that zone, uh, I think we should get started on it. Um, three, uh, one thing I feel is needed near the new croc extension where the seating is in an area to leave prams uh, while, they're watch it, while they're watching the talks. Not sure about spacing, but I'm sure you could squeeze a small parking area in. Yeah, I'm sure we could probably do something there. Um, if I hadn't put, if I hadn't put these plants this planter in here that would have been the perfect place for them to go but i don't want to take this out because it really finishes off this edging really really well uh, at the back um so yeah i don't really want to take that out if i can help it um but i'm sure we can do something i'm really really i'm sure we can do something uh to kind of fit something like that in um down there at the uh, little crock at the little, uh, the little crocosseum, the mini crocosseum, I guess you could call that. Um, and then four, in the empty space next to the cafe, I feel it would be a great space to, pl uh, to place a playground and an outdoor seating area. Personally, like to keep that area open and not add in any buildings, as that area is getting full of buildings. Uh, yeah, and I think you're kind of thinking along the same lines of Cam. Uh, I think it does really need to be sort of like an open space. We do, I think, it's been quite dense, hasn't it? The build to this point has been very, very dense, and I think that... With these animals that we're starting to place we are going to find more open spaces and it's going to feel nice but when there's open spaces there is a need to create shade so we have got to think about that as well uh, but thanks for the great content and looking forward to the stream and videos i'm glad you really enjoyed it uh, my my friend and last comment this week comes from Foth and uh, they've said hi Dan really love the episode today uh, the lookout cafe is absolutely stunning I love it had a few suggestions and I hope you like them uh, one I already mentioned this in the live stream but I think that a springbok habitat would fit uh, fit in really nice nearby the gemsbok uh, when you do those I think what we what I'm going to do with this um, Foth is that I'm obviously I think you were kind of thinking of putting them in here but we're obviously going to head up this way for Africa and I do think think the springbok will probably fit in a nice sort of habitat along this road basically i think uh, i think close by but not like right on top of but uh yeah i think they're going to fit in quite nicely uh along that road so uh they're definitely going to be something that we put in two i think you probably should have uh, a bigger animal soon obviously not right now but i plan for the future maybe a hippo habitat and for the big attraction uh to it have an underground viewing it facility but that's just a random idea uh there's lots of different ones you could create uh this way the visitors gets their big wow moment uh get their big wow moments uh, not all at once yeah uh, we do probably need some bigger animals soon it's obviously it's just a, a case of creating the space to be able to bring them into the zoo but yeah it's a fair comment and free is it just uh, free is just a question when do you plan to make the cinematic um slash show all the animals so far uh, episode loving the series absolute fire hope you your wife emily are well we're all doing fantastic my friend and i am actually going to get on to the subject now because you've asked i am going to get on to the subject now of uh you know when that is going to happen uh my friend uh it's just so we can kind of cover this now i did i did cover this with everyone during the live streams during the week if you're a member of the discord you will have seen it but uh, i did kind of put this sort of like loose schedule out for the series and the plan for the coming weeks basically probably for the coming month so it's on your screen now you're going to see one i plan to stream at least twice a week for the duration of the series i'm really enjoying the live streams i'm going to continue to plug out at least two streams a week there could be some weeks where i stream every single day but obviously with being a graphic designer trying to make some money and having a, you know that job to do and and having other videos for the channel to do it's not always possible but i am going to stream at least two days a week usually they're going to be set in stone as tuesdays and thursdays um but if there are any other days you'll always be let know anyway 
two. There will be an official roundup um, episode every Sunday going over what we've done in the current week. That's why I called this today our roundup episode. So the finished product of what we do during the week will always come out on a Sunday for you guys. I know there are some people that don't like the live streams. They're not really into it. They prefer to watch this more uh, edited, broken down version. And so I mean, I'm going to continue to do these every single Sunday. They will go out at 4 p.m. on the Sunday as well. Uh, I like to have a nice scheduled slot for all of my um, videos. Uh, free. The next few episodes will play out as follows. Episode 14 will be obviously today's episode. That's like this week's project. Episode 15 will be next week's episode on Sunday, which will be all of the projects that we tackle that week. There will then be an episode 15.5, which I'm thinking about putting out the following Wednesday, so like two Wednesdays time. Um, and then there will be a one-off special where we'll be introducing the official zoo map and our first proper like in-depth zoo tour where I just take you around the zoo and we get to look at absolutely everything and I think the good thing about that zoo tour is we'll be able to see things that we think might potentially need upgrading downgrading changing and so on and so on and then there will uh, be a cinematic episode showcasing the project so it is coming it's probably going to be about three or four weeks until you see it but it is on the cards. It is there for me to do. Uh, it's just I have a very set in stone plan for the series at the moment um, because I don't know how long the series is going to run. I don't know how far we're going to get with the build. Uh, I don't know how popular this is going to remain. So, like, I have a plan that I'm placing in, month, in place month by month, basically. Uh, and then there is one more thing on there. Uh, once the current zones on offer are unlocked, there will be a slight break before offering up new areas to unlock. This will give us uh, time to finish what we're doing and give me time to streamline all your fantastic ideas for the future. You'll find out more about that when we get to the zoning section in today's episode. But essentially uh, what I'm going to do is just offer these zones to you once they're all voted off we'll have a small break from uh, zones because there will be lots of area to fill in I think especially once we unlock that zone A that's going to unlock so much space we're going to have a big project there and then you're going to have the other two zones on offer and I think once they're all unlocked it might be a good thing for a week or two to take a break from unlocking zones before I offer you up new ones. But I, before I offer you new zones, I really need to have a think about where stuff is going to go from the ideas that you've given me anyway. So I hope that all makes sense, my friends. I really, really do. Um, it was something I felt needed saying and, uh, you know, needed to bring into your attention. But uh, yeah, with the power of editing, my friends, we are now going to skip forward into the future. We'll be back in the year 80. And so here we are, ladies and gents, we are back in the year 80. We've skipped forward five years. I've actually realised I've made a minor mistake. I think we're supposed to go forward 10 years, but yeah, uh, because obviously this has all been made already, this is what we're going to do for this time, and uh, yeah, I'll have to rectify that mistake at a later date. This was actually five squares that we took out and uh, that means that we should have gone forward a little further uh, than we have. But uh, anyway, I'm going to talk over what we're going to do uh, basically in the build section today. Um, I'm just going to say as well, if you do hear any background noise, um, the bathroom is next door to this room and uh, my daughter's having a, having a bath at the moment and she does not like the water. So yeah, if you can hear any wailing and crying, <laughs> I do apologise. But uh, um, yeah, so basically what we're going to be doing with this space, ladies and gents, is Gemsbok enclosure. It's the big part of today's episode. We need to get that put in. We've been talking about it for a while. Uh, that needs to be, you know, done. There's going to be a small amount of editing I do in today's episode to some other, you know, habitats and stuff. Uh, I need to make the door bigger on this uh, for our male croc. I need to make the door bigger on this so our male crocs can get out. It's something I have literally only just realised is that our male garials can't get to the outside. So um, that's a change that needs making as well. Um, there's probably going to be a bit of backstage work as well being done back here. I think it needs the planning needs to be at least put in place um you know for the road system that the staff are going to use with their you know with their um with their like tractors and with their lorries and uh, you know their carts and that sort of stuff uh, so we definitely need to start getting things like that in place and then this area I'm not sure if I'm going to get it done in today's episode I think there might be some planning in place because I did ask people in one of the live streams to start getting their ideas over in the Discord of what they think we could do with this. Now, we know what we want to do with it. It's going to be like a nice, large, open sort of a grassed area where people can have picnics and whatnot. And then we were thinking about like a kid's playground or something along those lines. So, you know, if you've got any, you know, reference material that you want to send to me over on the Discord, feel free to do so. Loads of people have. Um, I just want to let all those people know. 
I did receive all that stuff. Uh, I wasn't ignoring any of you. I was just kind of saving it all into a file and then I'm potentially going to use bits from each one of them to try to come up with something for that area uh, in the end. But you are going to see a small amount of planning does start to get put in place on here, but um, I'm pro I, pro I probably won't get it finished because I have, I have ideas for it basically and I feel like certain areas need to be unlocked to really bring it to its full potential. But uh, yeah, the big bit to take notice of is obviously this here and that's what we're going to get cracking with now in the build section. And so here we are, ladies and gents, in the build section of today's episode. We're really zoomed out at the moment, but uh, we are going to zoom right in in a minute. Basically, I wanted to leave you so you could see a little sneak peek of what we've done in today's episode in the distance. And uh, yeah, we're going to go and take a really good look at that in a moment. Um... I am also going to talk about the sort of planning that I've started putting in place as well. And then you guys can let me know if you like it, dislike it, and then I can make changes, um, you know, where we see fit, basically. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, this is still a community build. I want people to remember that. This is still a community build. So if there is stuff you don't like, feel free to say you don't like it and we can make the changes. Uh, I don't want people to feel, you know, like they can't say that anymore. But uh, let's zoom in and take a look, shall we? I'm going to do this first, and then I'm going to look at the animal habitat, basically. I think that might be uh, the nicer way of doing it. But uh, I did start work on the back lot area as well the backstage area uh, I didn't get it all done but I, I did start some work on it uh, you're going to see there are some slight terrain differences here I, I, do, I, I we need to start doing this we need to start adding a bit more height and a bit more depth to the zoo it is very much one level at the moment it is difficult to do that when you build in squares it is really really hard to do that but I'm going to talk about how I think we can add some some uh, terrain differences in a moment but uh, I did have a step up here i've put these planters in i am going to put trees here i just weren't sure which ones to do uh and i didn't want to put them in yet because i didn't know what was going to happen with the rest of the space basically but um yeah essentially i've started putting in the little crossings and whatnot for our staff um we come around this way and uh, this is actually at the back of uh uh, Jareth's, uh, you know, reptile center, which is, uh, which is really cool. Actually, it's right on the back of that. Um, so you come around this way and I've done this nice little seated area for our staff. You know, they might want to take a little bit of a, a load off on a nice day. They might want to come back here and eat their lunch as well. So I've put this nice little seated area in for our staff over here. And then you're going to see this. And I, I just felt like we really needed like a barn where some materials could be kept some, you know, hay and straw and that sort of stuff. Uh, unfortunately I tried so, so hard to make you know bowels of hay and straw and uh, everything that i did just absolutely failed they looked horrible so instead uh, I, i've just gone with this idea in, you know in, in, instead and I, I think it looks nice i do think it really looks cool we'll go in there in a moment but uh, what i've done is i've done this little this little off-road here where a couple of our trailers are kept this is more you know these are trailers more for sort of like hoof stock animals and that sort of stuff uh you know like you could imagine your gemsbok being loaded up in these uh, in these trailers to be moved and obviously this is the gemsbok over here so you know we're going to get to that in a moment so yeah we've got our trailer sort of parked in there uh you come up this way and uh and yeah you will see we've got one of our little carts obviously that this person could be here picking up some materials or whatever to take to another part of the zoo but yeah we dive we do sort of dive inside in a moment it's just very much just a, a really simple sort of like metal barn i was having a look online and this was something that came up a lot this sort of design of barn really did come up a lot for this sort of thing and uh i really like it i think the colors as well i think they really caught a sort of complement each other and uh it was a pretty simple build pretty simple thing to put together but i think it's highly effective and just adds something to the backstage uh area so then yeah we dive inside and the detail continues like a ridiculous amount of detail you know what i'm like ladies and gents i've made these you know metal structures for the inside uh you know that would support the roof and whatnot um and uh yeah then in here we've got you know like our hay and our straw and whatnot uh you can see zookeepers have been over here sort of loading up uh we've got like a little box that you know stuff would have been kept in uh we've got uh, you know a bunch of uh, a bunch of implements over here you know like your pitchforks your spades and so on and so on a few boxes of material here and then we've got a couple of like lawn mowers that i guess we would use for you know maintaining the zoo um i did not make this i'm, I'm just going to throw that out there now i attempted to make something like this and uh it didn't come out like 
this one did um, this is from the workshop it's amazing isn't it absolutely amazing absolutely in love with it and especially from a distance it looks even better I just think it looks great from a distance it just really finishes it off and so yeah we've put that in there I am thinking of making like a potential sort of like another sort of um, you know building like this where we could keep stuff like tractors and all that sort of stuff there's no good ones on the workshop in my opinion unfortunately so it is going to be something I'm going to have to attempt to make myself um, I'm not the greatest at that sort of stuff i'm good at habitats i'm good at buildings but these really small finicky things i i, I do struggle with uh, a little bit but amazing absolutely amazing and yeah just added something to the backstage area i've put more of these sort of like animal storage uh, you know crates here as well at the back uh, you know a bin just to really sort of try to fill this area up and uh, added some foliage in just to you know get a pop of color because it can get very gray and concretey and uh, yeah i just feel like that adds something it really does add something to the backstage area if we continue this way this is the behind the scenes of the games box so we you know we talked about this in the live stream we wanted an area where you know we could separate animals if we ever needed to um and um yeah this is what we've done basically the only bit i haven't done which is a big mistake on my part is i was going to add a smaller stable um because this stable is just for the habitat we were going to add a smaller stable for um the animals uh, if they were ever to use this space um I am thinking we can probably just extend this if we want to at a later date. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as it is. And, uh, you know, this is just going to be what we managed to achieve, you know, with the money that the zoo had at the, at the time for law purposes, basically. Here's how I'm going to sell it to you. Um, you know, we've got this lovely gate here. This would be your access gate. Uh, you know, if the animals ever needed, you know, taking off exhibit or, you know, when they arrive and so on and so on. We did this one slightly different to the camel habitat. We've got this initial gate here, um, but we then... Um, we, we did this section so that the uh, Gemsbok basically couldn't ruin our guttering and things like that. Uh, and it's just so we had this area that was separate uh, to the animals. Obviously, they do have big horns. And so our zookeepers would need to protect themselves, you know, at all times. And uh, that was one of the ways that we did it. And this is um, this basically we, we didn't copy and paste, but we used the basis of what we did with the camels. And then we've just changed it up ever so slightly the hard shelter. Uh, and so I guess we should jump in to the habitat, basically. Um, so yeah let's, let's talk about the hard shelter first so yeah like I say we did use the base of the camel one but we changed the colour up ever so slightly we, we remain with the same wood but we halved it inside um, you know we've just used one side of the of the um, of the hard shelter then you come inside and it is slightly different in here uh, we really opened it up for the animals uh, we do have this gate obviously to take them out to the backstage area uh, if we needed to do it that way um, we uh we then have um you know this is our staff entry we've got cameras in here because people were saying about having the cameras in here it's good to be able to watch the animals at night and so on and so on uh so yeah it's pretty pretty simple design inside here but we added something different to the outside basically we did these lovely sort of tarped um you know draped sort of like shaded areas this was something that nightclive said was really important for these animals uh you know they needed a bit of shade they might not always want to go in the stable so uh with them being quite shy animals we really just built the back of the habitat up um and uh yes yeah, so that's what we've done and uh, we obviously put some bedding and whatnot underneath but these came out really nice uh, we give a pop of color as well uh something we were really conscious of doing we got the wood in as well i need to change the wood on this to this color because this is actually a slightly different color that is the one thing i didn't do is i just need to change the uh, color of the wood up on this to match uh, so they all really really um all really sort of accents each other i put their scratch post as part of this these are very big and ugly and i uh I couldn't think of a way to do, to just to, to disguise it sort of in the habitat without it looking like copy and paste from the camel habitat. So uh, instead, I've just hidden it back here. A couple of trees to hide this corner as well. Uh, apologies for the little cut in there. I had to sneeze, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so yeah, a couple of trees back here as well, just to uh, just to sort of hide all this in and uh, pack it up. And uh, I think it looks really really nice. And then as you head towards the front, uh, we've just gone quite heavy on the foliage at the front, and we've left it more open planes at the back now obviously these animals are 
more sort of desert animals in the wild but we are trying to stick with the fact that this is a temperate zoo stuff would grow um you know we would you know be decorating it slightly different to the way they the way they would it was brought to my attention that we would possibly have to protect these plants because the gemsbok would eat them but after doing a little reading after doing a little research the only thing zoos really concentrate on protecting are the trees not so much these ground plants because if they get eaten they get eaten they do tend to grow back um so it's just one of those things so it was a bit of a catch-22 situation it was like do i run uh you know like a, a finicky fence and then make this even smaller this habitat or do i leave it as it is and i think for now i'm gonna leave it but you know if enough of you think that i need to start you know putting in you know plant protectors and things like that then it might be an idea i have to come up with but it was something brought to my attention and i did take the time to to go and read it they, they kind of said that some of the plants might be poisonous to the gemsbok but believe it or not gemsbok there's a there's a species of plant that gemsbok actually eat that they know are poisonous to them that helps make them better, which is mental. Uh, the things you find out when you uh, are doing a little bit of reading and a little bit of research. And, uh, yeah, we, we went with some slightly different plants as well. Uh, we tried these out. I think these work quite nice in the habitat. They just bring something a little different. And, uh, yeah, I think from this angle, I think it's a really, really lovely habitat. Really beautifully done. Um, I think it looks it will look nice for the guests as well. We've put our education in. Uh, I've gone very low-key with the education on this one. I've put that there, and the only place I could really find to put the bin was there. I didn't like it anywhere else, so it's just on the corner for now. But, yeah, we've put our education in. Like I say, it's a bit more low-key for these animals. Uh, we come around this way, and obviously this is all very much copy and paste from the other side. It's a bit more of an open area there for people to see. You know, as they walk around this corner, they're going to get that beautiful that, that beautiful look of the Gemsbok. Um, you know, it's the, we want it to be that I Spy look, don't we? So, uh, you know, that's really nice. And then we're going to come around this way, and there are additions that have been made uh, back here, basically, to try to, to change this up. Now, I haven't done this. Uh, you know, I know Hayley um, did say, you know, we, we, we need to address that. I haven't done this. I, I want to go back to the drawing board and try and think of a better way to do this. I am thinking that, you know, when the show is on, we could shut this and the push chairs could all be, you know, put in here and, and at the back there. That's the only thing I can think of at the moment um, is the only way we do it because there's not really the space anywhere else. We do need signage up and I, just, I think we actually need a cover to go over the top of this as well. There's lots I need to do for that to finish it but um, I was not feeling very inspired and uh, the ideas just weren't flowing at the time. Um, we come this way, you're going to see that I've made this door bigger uh, this door over here has been made bigger as well. Um, our Mal Salty is in the facility now. This is Chandler uh, down here. He has been renamed already. Uh, so, yeah, that's Chandler, everybody. Uh, welcome him to the zoo. Uh, but, yeah, I've made those doors bigger just to help get the animals outdoors a bit more, hopefully. Uh, but, yeah, if you come round this way, this is where some changes have been made as well. So we now have this staff access route here. Um, this one's quite open. Um, I do feel like I need to close it up a bit more, but um, but yeah, the, the guests can't see at the end of the day, and that's the most important thing. So it runs around that way, basically. It takes you to this sort of backstage area. It's just a nice way for the uh, for the zookeepers to be able to get in and out. This is just more of a walkthrough. We're not gone with a bigger gate, so you can get cars through here. Um, I don't really feel like the cars would need to get through this way, so uh, that's one of the reasons why I've not done it that way. Uh, then you carry on this way. I've done this plant in here very similar to the way the plant planting's done over here so it's uh you know very sort of like symmetrical kind of uh, design that we've gone with i've gone with these little i'm going to go with these little notice boards where heavy planting is so that you can get a bit of information on the foliage that's being used in the zoo i, I i've seen that uh, done before i think it's really important that we do that and then um this spot here was really ugly before it was just fencing both sides and uh in the stream someone brought it to my attention that like, it just looks a bit dead it looks a bit of a dead space stand and i think we need to sort it out so we came up with this idea of just doing this pagoda type um you know design a bit similar to what we had in the in the wild gardens and uh, so we decided to go with the same thing where uh, we've, we've run it along but i've gone really really heavy on the foliage on this one to make it feel like you're immersed uh, as you walk through and it's come off really really nice like to be fair from this angle it don't really look much um 
it really doesn't look much at all. Uh, I love the fact that the vines have like found their way into the croc exhibit as well. Um, and uh, this is this here is just going to be like a storage basically for our staff. We're just going to have some stuff that's kept in here. Uh, I am going to sort that out at a later date. And the, and it all spills over into the gems block as well. Vines they really take over, don't they? So it don't really look much there. But when you deep dive in, doesn't it look pretty from this angle? All the wisteria all growing here. We've got the vines all taking over, and then uh, yeah, you walk through and you're just immersed in this beautiful sort of green, sort of jungle esque uh, design. And uh, yeah, you just carry on walking through. Your vines have all like drooping down this side, wisteria this side. It's just a nice mix of the two plants. And uh, you obviously over time they would they would just take over, and it'd be really really pretty. And then obviously you come out the other end, and you're met with you know your signposts, and uh, you know there's a little bench there to sit, and then you would go round this corner basically ladies and gents and off you go into the main part of jammy conservation there's a little spot there that i need to fill in i've just noticed that that needs to be sorted out um all those little bits and bobs really annoy me uh, when I need to fill them in. But yeah, I hope you like that little addition. Um, I think that really adds something to the Reptarium. Um, we, we, at the end of the day, what's nice is that Croc Corner, it, that's not really a corner anymore, is now masked by these two beautiful sort of grassy, you know, grass sort of like areas. And uh, I really like the fact that that's, that's kind of how that's ended up working out. Um, we definitely needed to bring more green into the zoo uh, over this side. Uh, it is very, very sort of like open isn't it there's not a lot of shade um so we did really really need to do that um over there um and then the last thing i really need to show you and talk about in today's uh you know uh, build section is this over here now i've started putting the pieces in you know in place um i've i've put this here this this um this design of uh, this design here is uh, is done basically. Um, this is where this finishes. This this plaza, uh, essentially this this uh, this entrance plaza finishes here and it finishes here. This way we're going to go off into Africa. This way we're going off into like the tropical house. So you could call it South America if you wish, um, but there's more there's more tropical than there than just in South America. We have to remember that there's there's rainforests in you know the Congo in Africa. Uh, you know there, there, there's rainforests in Australia. So we have to remember that the tropical zone isn't just one sort of area of the world, one continent. It's going to be a bit more to it than that. But yeah, we're going to go off that way. And so obviously I've put a line in here as well. And that's where this, this plaza is going to finish. We've got this open area here that, um, you know, we need to address. Um, some suggestions have been thrown out to me that I really, really like. I've got to make a map that really represents this zoo a bit more. Um, I was just going to use some off of the workshop, but I'm going to have a go at creating a proper map that actually looks like this zoo. And I think a, a big map sort of like in here somewhere would be nice. And also I think we're going to have a checkpoint for the zoo tours uh, here. I think that might be perfect as well, just to kind of fit, have a bit of a space filler in the middle there. I'm quite conscious that this is a really, really open area. But at the same time, this is our checkpoint area. This is where you're going to go off on your adventure to like the next zone basically so uh yeah that's um that's just something that uh, I'm, I'm conscious of but i understand uh, why it is the way it is basically so um yeah and then um this area here we are obviously going to go with that open sort of green potentially a kid's park um but i wanted to kind of try to keep some symmetry and keep the design of this plaza in place so i'm trying to recreate this here so that this is completely symmetrical. I think anyone that's got a bit of OCD like me would uh, would definitely want it that way. I've then gone just plants here in these little planters. Uh, this is where these planters are going to finish, though. These stone planters are not really going to be seen too much more around the zoo. We're going to come up with different ideas so that each part of the zoo has its own you know, look and its own sort of theme. So we're going to put those there. That just fills the space in a bit more, like from this angle. It's really nice. It looks like the, the plants are really sort of like um, filling in the space behind the restaurant, which is what you want to do. Um, you want to try and fill these spaces in. Um, and then, yeah, and then I guess we could have our entrance you know one entrance here another entrance potentially here but i want to try to get the ground level to go up now there is a subtle change in terrain here uh, it does actually go up at a slight uh, slant and you would see when this uh, when this goes this way this goes flat i'm going to take this up a bit further so that for the tropical house we're going to go up some steps uh, to get to it i think it would be a nice change of pace to try to take the terrain up a bit and i think that the kids playground i'm going to set up higher as well 
Um, I'm going to have obviously like little um, smooth ramps into it. We obviously you wouldn't want steps because kids, you know, are accident prone they can be. But yeah, I think we could have a nice smooth slope up into the playground so that could sit quite high as well. And it's one of the reasons why I've not done it because, as we all know, terrain work isn't you know my strongest um, suit at the end of the day. But yeah, that's it basically. That's the build section. I know there's bits unfinished and whatnot, but there's bits and pieces that are in place. And I, I really, really hope you like it, ladies and gents, especially this area over here. I really feel like this is um this has started to sort of take a take on kind of like a look of its own hasn't it it really really has um and um it's coming along really really nicely so next up, we're going to talk zones, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to see the map on your screen. You're going to see the rules appearing now as well. For anybody that's not aware, this is how we choose the section that we're going to unlock in the next episode uh, from now on. Um, this week's like target is going to be 60 likes again. If you hit that 60 like target, then I can open up any square of my choice. And then you guys can obviously get your ideas into me on what we do with it. But as far as the zones are concerned, we are down to three zones. Uh, like I said in that piece uh, during the comment section, um, I am basically going to be um you know streamlining this to a point where we're just going to unlock all these zones first and then potentially have a week off before i offer you up new zones so first and foremost zone a that's the tropical house no more needs to be said we know what we're going to be doing with that i am going to be releasing a plan of the tropical house though because that's going to be a big big build and i am going to plan that properly uh so i will release plans maybe in the live streams or however we go about it when we're building it but um i am going to be releasing plans on how i'm going to do that zone b you will see that on your screen as well that is kind of like just finishing off sort of backstage stuff uh you know obviously sort of like events facilities and that sort of stuff um i do know uh, well one other zone that i am gonna obviously make available at a later date uh based on stuff that's been said to me but not going to offer it up to you yet and then you will see that uh, zone d has now become zone c uh, and that is of course the second reptile nursery and sort of like a research center uh so that's that area there so essentially those are your zones to vote on ladies and gents let me know in the comment section below which zone you would like to see the most um i kind of think i know already which zone is going to get picked but uh i'm still going to offer it up to you because um at the end of the day your voice needs to be heard and uh, i need to hear your reasons why so zone a is tropical house zone b is just backstage events facilities and zone c is the you know an extension to the reptarium with uh, our second uh, you know nursery for our reptiles and a research center and I guess then, ladies and gents, it's time for the live section of today's episode. Uh, we've got a little bit of a zoo management to do. Uh, nothing too serious, uh, but yeah, we have got a little work to do. First and foremost is I'm going to put the prices up again um, because uh, we're still getting that message that they're too cheap. We're going to make the uh, adults 22 and we are going to make the children 19. I'm doing this based off of like the averages I've taken from your comments. I am actually going to stop that there. We're not going to put the zoo price up anymore. I think we would be taking the mick a little bit. We want this zoo to be affordable to everybody. So I am going to, you know, put it there. That's it. We're not going up anymore for the foreseeable future. Maybe when the facility gets really, really big, we can think about it. But for now, we're not going to. You're going to see that Akimodos are actually going to mature very, very soon. So they're going to have to be moved on uh, from our animal nursery. So that's that done. Um, the other thing that needs doing is we have lots of animals that probably need um, uh, a, a quick look at and a bit of sorting out. Um, so all of our Aldabras are okay. Um, our camels are okay as well. You will see that uh, Humphrey, you know, we're not going to be breeding him anymore. We're going to have five camels at the end of the day. I'm going to wait until these two guys are grown up and then we will move them, move them both on. They are both males at the end of the day. We'll move those both on when they are fully grown. But for now, we're just going to leave the camels as a family of five. Uh, we carry on moving on down and then you will see that our Galapagos are all still okay. They're still not fully grown. Uh, you're going to see that we do have our Gemsbok in. I will introduce you all to, uh, to them uh, properly in a moment. We've got two females and a male to start with. Um, I think it was Nightclub made a left me a comment. Now, Nightclub, I wasn't ignoring this comment, but for whatever reason, it kept deleting on YouTube. So I had to log into my emails and read it that way and i see that you made a point of saying that we don't have to always go with just one male uh, and so on and so on we can go with a, a different route what i'm tending to do at the minute buddy just so you know is i'm going with the one male 
and a few females. And then as males are born, we can then decide whether or not we keep them or move them on. And then we can then start our own bloodline at the zoo. That's kind of how I want to do it. So um, I want to try to breed the animals and then try to keep some back whilst then we could potentially release the ones that we were traded or we rescued off into the wild, basically, buddy. That's how, that's how I want to try and do it. So that's why I'm always going with that one male. I'm going to see if there are any females um, in the uh, trade center because I would like to get a couple more in if I can. We named them Zorro uh, because of the band on his face. It looks like he's wearing a mask. Jade and Amethyst because they are types of gems. And obviously, uh, we've got Gems Box. So, um, yeah, it was really clever the way people come up with their names. Um, if there are any animals you want to name, feel free to leave your name suggestions in as well. It's something we do a lot in the streams, but I never tend to mention it in uh, in these uh, sections. Uh, so, the the Garials uh, have all grown up again as well, so we actually have lots of Garials we need to move on. Um, we have Chewy, who was uh, is an OG. Uh, Ian's an OG. We've got Stephanie. Are you an OG? I think you are. Um, so then, yeah, we've got all these that have reached sort of like maturity that need moving on, basically. So let's uh, do that. We're not going to keep many of these behind um i think we are actually going to move the majority of them off into the wild um this one needs moving as well so yeah so basically our male and our two females are you know being kept back at the end of the day i can't breed with any of these because they are obviously he's young so um we are just going to move them off into the wild i think so let's release those garials to the wild uh, we're going to get 540 conservation points of that that's amazing work really really our conservation effort at this zoo has been top notch it does have to be said um animals are a little thirsty we i can't wait until we get to the next uh, zoo management episode because we are definitely getting to the point where um you know we need we need the zonings put in we need those uh you know those work zones put in uh, in the zoo uh, for sure uh, so let's carry on going down. Um, we uh, They're okay. So we can start breeding our garials again, which is always good. Um, it's always a good thing. Um, so our gear monster, we need to move on the youngsters in the gear monsters. Um, 24 conservation points there. Another good effort from us. Um, then we need to take a look at the golden frogs. They are always going crazy, aren't they, with their uh, with that breeding program? That is probably one of the most successful breeding programs we've got at the zoo currently. Uh, so one, two, three, four. There should be always five um, in reserve. So they're all eight. So I'm just going to keep a female behind because there should always be five. So I'm going to keep a female behind. Let's release those to the wild. We're going to get 10 conservation points for those. Um, yep, that iguana's still hungry. Can one of the zookeepers go and do their job, please? That would be very much appreciated. Um, then we're going to move on down to the flamingos. Um, you will see that uh, our young... Um, our young uh, male flamingo who was born at the zoo has now come of age. We're going to keep him around because, uh, like I was just saying, we are going to try to, you know, keep our own sort of flamingos around at the facility. So uh, we're definitely going to be doing that. Um, if we work our way down, obviously we've got all of our pea fowls. They've actually been breeding a little bit. You're going to see that uh, Shavra has, uh, is, is getting quite old as well now. She was the original female. And Mr. Peabody is still going, everyone. Uh, somehow... I think we might have to dedicate a statue to him uh, as and when the day comes that uh, he disappears. Um, our, our, um, all of our Komodos are actually maturing uh, at the moment, so we're going to have to move these guys uh, off into the wild. These are all the ones that are in the nursery, so uh, this is actually quite exciting that we're at that point where a few of these are able to go off into the wild because, um, you know, at the end of the day, for if you remember law purposes, that's why they are here, ladies and gents, at the facility. Um, so, yeah, we're going to release those guys to the wild. We're going to get 178 conservation points. What a great effort that is on the part of the Komodo dragons. And then they are getting very old, our Komodos, uh, our original pair. But do you know what? We're going to take her off the contraceptive and see if we can just get one more clutch of eggs i think out of uh out of those guys so that we can fill up the rooms a little bit more i might separate 
uh, these animals if I have, no I don't need to they're actually in separate rooms already and then you're going to see that the lemurs are having a lot of fun reproducing uh, we've had lots of lemur babies uh, already we've got so much space over there I'm really not worried about you know space issues and whatnot but we've got three ring-tailed lemur babies and we've got two uh, no we've actually got three um, three um, red ruffed uh, babies as well which is amazing to see and then uh, Chandler is now in with Bindi. Uh, they're our new saltwater couple, and hopefully we're going to get some young out of those, but we do obviously need uh, a facility to place those animals uh, as and when that happens. So, yeah, pretty good stuff there all around. I think we can we can all agree, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah, the uh, the other thing I wanted to do is see if there was any more Gemsbrock available, and I want to show, you, show off the Gemsbrock a little bit as well, um, because you didn't really get to see them um, much, um, in today's episode, so Gemsbok, let's see what females are available. Longevity and immunity, oh, that's not good. And then size and immunity. The immunity is actually something that I see popping up quite a lot. It was brought to my attention that um, it's not very realistic the quarantine that these animals get sent to, and um, I totally agree. But unfortunately. We don't have the spot to make the big animal hospital facility at the moment where the next quarantine area is going to be. So, um, yeah, it's just one of those things that we, we just have to, we have to do it the way we're doing it at the minute. Um, it isn't realistic at all because they'd have to be walked into the staff building. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's just not the way you would do it, is it? But, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's just the way we have to do things at the moment. But the immunity there is a bit of a problem, isn't it? Uh, I don't mind too much the longevity and size as well. I don't mind that. So these two, mm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm just, just gonna stick with the three we've got, and we 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 can uh, we can think about it at a later date. Now they do tend to stick up here a fair amount. I have put stuff up the front to try and force them up the front, but I think it's just part of the nature of the animal where they are shy. They do just tend to stay up here a fair amount. It's nice to see this one using uh, using this shaded area. Um, and they stick together. They're a herded animal. They're a herding animal, which which I like. But, yeah, they are they are very, very pretty animals, aren't they, the Gemsbok? I love the markings, especially on the face. And, and um, yeah, beautiful, beautiful animals. They really are. And they're, they're a lovely addition to the facility. I've, I've not built an exhibit for these guys in any of my other... Uh, zoos or projects so it's good to have another animal it does look as though this game's bot going to get a bit brave and he's going to stand on the mound in the middle or she i'm not sure if it's a he yep it's one of the girls and uh she's going to take pride of place and she is actually going to get a bit brave and come towards the front of the exhibit so yeah they're lovely looking animals and they are a lovely addition and i am going to keep an eye out for a couple more females um that we can add to this herd of Gemsbok, but uh, for now, I think we're just going to have to deal with the free until uh, some better ones become available. We had this issue with the saltwater croc at the end of the day. We just had to wait for the right one uh, to become available. But that's going to be today's episode, ladies and gentlemen. We are done and dusted for another fantastic uh, episode of uh, Jammy Conservation Park. I'm going to leave it here so you can enjoy the Gemsbok and the camels. I think that's a, a really nice way to end today's episode. You get a brilliant view of the checkpoint as well into the Reptarium. But we are done and dusted, my friends. So remember, do all the usual stuff. Vote on the zone that you want to see unlocked next. Uh, obviously, I'm going to give it 24 hours. Um, and then I'll tally up the votes so then I know which uh, which zone I'm unlocking in the next stream. Um, do leave your ideas on you know what to do with the spaces that there still are. Obviously, we do have a bit of space in the back lot area of the Gemsbot. We've got that park area space that obviously we still need to finalise our ideas for. And we have that little bit of space behind the guest, uh, you know, the guest services area. Although we have have a semi idea for that we need to find a way of making that work so feel free to continue to get your ideas in uh, and vote on the zone uh, especially that you want to see unlocked next episode but if you're new consider subscribing to the channel i'd really appreciate it we're really trying to grow the channel massively uh like the video if you've enjoyed it and remember 60 like target for me to unlock a square of my choice and uh yeah we're done description box you'll find great stuff like discord uh, socials and all that so make sure you go and check that out i have updated the discord link the old one wasn't working silly old me didn't realize but my friends i'm done and dusting enjoy the rest of your day and i'll see you next time for some more chammy conservation park